called the Reflex Robot. This is a humanoid upper body, wheeled lower body, and it can do picking from shelves, picking two bins, moving boxes onto conveyors, you name it. It's got a 16 hour battery life, so you can do work a double shift with one robot without charging. This is a 50 pound bag. We've got a little shelf on the base there so we can drive around with that weight. We can do palletizing, depalletizing, loading to conveyors, and also serving ice cream in the front of the booth. Robots, automation, AI. Are we working ourselves out of a job? According to a CNN article from June 2024, 61% of large US firms plan to use AI this year to automate tasks previously done by humans. No more fetching boxes off the rack. Having to do work that could be dangerous to people and generally speeding up workflow. Saving businesses time and money. In short, automation is taking over. It's clear that running a company of any size, especially large ones, is next to impossible without these technologies going forward. But should that be a cause for concern? Or something to celebrate. You think about a dishwasher, for instance. A dishwasher is always going to be better at washing your dishes than you are, but you still got to put the dishes in the dishwasher. Could automating tasks that were once time and resource intensive free up workers to focus more on creativity or will all the careers disappear? There's lots of automatic sorting and retrieval systems. There's trucks that move your product from point A to point B, but you still need to put the stuff in the truck. You still need to put the stuff in the automatic sorting and retrieval systems. Will tech finally close the skilled labor gap or leave tradespeople behind? This last mile thing is usually what requires a human. And this is kind of what we view as the most pragmatic approach to do that last mile step for all of these processes. We went to the ProMat show in Chicago to see the future of automation up close and find out if there's still a place today for the people in the trades of tomorrow. So how do I feel about AI? Oh, okay, that's a tough question. I really like AI, and I think it benefits the world very well. I initially thought that it was going to be challenging, you know, all these robots taking over automation and stuff. It makes life just easier and more efficient. The machines are nothing uh, without humans. I see why people would not like it because people are afraid of losing their jobs. In our field, if you're skilled, if you're driven, you're committed, there will always be a job for you. This show that we're at this week is all about the logistics space. Amazon, UPS, FedEx, everybody that ships anything. Well, guess what? They got to know where those packages are going, where they are, and where they need to go. Number one, we're showing barcode reading. So we're actually, that little white light there, that's actually a, a barcode reader. And it's reading these barcodes that are on here and letting the equipment know, okay, this thing of applesauce needs to go to Gaffney, South Carolina. We call it track and trace. It's telling basically the companies where these products need to go. The other thing we're doing is we're doing dimensioning. So if you can imagine, I'm a company and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fill my, bo my, uh, my box truck full of boxes. Well, I need to know how big those boxes are so I know how many boxes I can fit in that truck. Call it the AI or the, the brains of the operation knows, okay, I got a box that needs to go here. I've also got a box that is a certain size, and I know how many boxes can go in that truck that needs to go down to Washington, D.C. to deliver the goods. Gone are the days of, you know, lines of people in an in a assembly line putting things together. Everything is automated. The perception was, well, factory automation takes human jobs and stuff. That's absolutely 100% not the case. Robots do not take jobs. Robots do four things. They do the jobs that are dangerous, dull, dirty, and dark. Let a robot do that. No, don't have a human do that. So I'm Destin from the YouTube channel Smarter Every Day. I'm learning about the different technologies used in material handling. We help people ship the things that everybody loves to buy and wear and use in their daily life much more quickly. And the way that we do that is we use robotics to help move items around the warehouse more quickly than you normally would if you had to push a heavy cart to get things from where they are stored to where they're packed and shipped and sent to you. Robots are kind of scary to people sometimes because they look like humans and they're doing human-like things. If you're familiar with how traditional cart picking works, it's essentially someone with a hand scanner and a three-tier baker's rack, and they're winding through miles and miles of aisles. One thing I hear a lot is like, well, my job's gonna be replaced by a robot. And somebody had to program this robot. You need a new hat, you need a new pair of shoes. If you order those things, you click send on your order, and then that order goes to a warehouse where it gets assigned to a picker. These carry the totes with the products, so now the worker, hands-free, just walks up, picks the product, 
makes the scan, puts it on the bot, and then goes to tend to another robot. And the bots are doing all of those miles, and the human can just focus on the pick function. To make it go faster, now that order goes into the warehouse software and it gets sent to a robot. And the robot helps somebody pick it and they have to walk about one fifth less distance than they had to to get those items and then they send it out to you much more quickly and get it there next day. I've been waiting on him to come get this Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce for a long time. Are you gonna do that? What's up, bro? It's one of the things to focus on with robotics in the current state and industry is that they're replacing jobs that nobody wants to do. Are you teleoperated? You are teleoperated. They're difficult jobs, they're tedious, they're boring at times. Can you pick up the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce? Can you do that? Let's see, I mean, it's kind of over here. Okay, I'm impressed. These enable and empower the, the human to focus on like the value adding activities. Would you do me a favor and uh, go put it on top of that box over there? Just right over there? That's cool. Thank, yeah, that, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. When Chris asked me to do this video, I don't think he was expecting that. <laughs> These experts say automation isn't eliminating the skilled workforce entirely. But with the rise of robotics and AI, it raises a key question. Is college still the only reliable path to a well-paying career? A lot of people right now think that, well, when I get done with high school, I gotta go to college. We do not do not require a college education. There's a career in robotics for anybody. You have the experience and the other qualifications that is enough for us. Learning comes in all different ways, shapes, and forms. For me, I actually learned with my hands, and I'm a strong believer in, in the trades. What they don't realize is there's a lot of opportunities in manufacturing and the skilled trades that is a really, really awesome career path. When I was in school, it kind of made sense to go to college because tuition was like 1200 bucks when I started as a freshman. Have you seen tuition lately? We manufacture uh, using steel products, we weld, we form metal, we, we fabricate it. That starts off using your hands. I myself am actually a GED holder. I had challenges getting through school and unfortunately I had to drop out. But now, 30 years later, I have two degrees and I'm the chief people officer of Locust Robotics. There's more to life than being book smart. You also want to learn skills and I think skilled trades are a really, it's almost like a cheat code today. There's more open positions today in the trades than in any office uh, related position. Like I was talking to a plumber the other day. Holy cow, they're basically printing money. We understand where people are coming from when they come to us from different paths and we want to help people to get to exactly where they need to be to have a great career. And that's not just robotics, it's all technology. You don't have to be a technologist or a roboticist to work in technology. You can start working on the shop floor assembling. As you would imagine, you know, having that much hardware you know, across thousands of warehouses, there will be plenty of work. We've had people who started with us who did not have a high school diploma and we helped them get a GED. Technician jobs, to just maintenance, to even training opportunities um, with new customers. You could work in sales, you could work in marketing, you can work in a variety of different careers without having to be a technologist or a roboticist and have a robust, exciting career in technology no matter where you come in. If we see that you can do the work well and are reliable, then the college education is not a requirement at Locust. Yes. I'd like to go into the culinary field, own my own business. Hopefully something like engineering or like a trade. Uh, I was thinking more in terms of inventory and control over that. I would do something within skiing, snowboarding, or even like a mining industry. We really learn a lot more about the logistics side with trucking and rail. I think it's interesting, the whole business idea and like, you know, selling to people, talking to people, and uh, just having connections, getting around, and uh, owning your own business and sharing ideas. I would more want to lock in on, on rail, because I think, I personally think that's a much more interesting interesting route for me. How that interacts with more like breaking it down and then getting it to the warehouses and whatnot, I think that's really interesting. We use a lot of ladder logic in our conveyor. So if you get an input, then what is gonna happen to that package next? We do a little bit of robotic arm integration. So with this particular system, what we're doing is, if you're a large retailer like Walmart or Amazon, you may have compliance rules where in order to even sell your product to them, you have to have a label and they may require that it be in the upper left corner or the, the lower right. 
and each one may have a different rule. We've built a robotic labeler that essentially pulls the label from the labeler and places it in one of many locations. This is our really more traditional e-com fulfillment automation. But what this system's gonna do is a package is gonna come this direction. We're gonna gather the dimensions and weight. There's a LiDAR scanner up here. And what that does is it's, it projects light on the package and gets the, the length and the width and the height. And then below this zone, there's a scale. So we gather the weight and between with that data and the scan of the unique barcode, we can apply a shipping label. Come with me, I'm gonna show you something. So when you order something online, a pair of shoes, right? That order goes through and it comes up in their software at the warehouse. And they now know that that order needs to be fulfilled. So if you've got next day delivery, then they know that they need to prioritize that order for you. So what we're looking at now is a little bit of that inbound process, making sure that they can get their cases into the system and stored into the automation. So this is a piece of conveyor that's able to sort to many different destinations. So these are the shoes that you're ordering. Essentially what we're doing here, it's kind of like those self-driving cars that you see a lot. Now what we have is self-driving shuttles. So they automate the storage and retrieval of your product. They bring it forward to one of these goods to person and picking stations, and then people make sure that your correct size and your correct pair of shoes ends up in your final box to get out uh, and shipped over to you as quickly as possible. Before, we used to have people that would have to walk a ton to get stuff stored, uh, climb up high to pick the boxes out. Now we have uh, machinery that does all of that for us to make sure that you can get your stuff the next day. So, materials handling and automation. Literally anyone can get started in this high in demand field from a number of vantage points. But what kind of financial opportunities exist. The really cool thing is people can go learn these skills in a trade or in your high school and you can go right out of school and make good money, provide for your family. You make great money in, the, in this business, quite frankly. 60, 75, 90 thousand dollars. It can pay very well, right? So you can get up to six figures. We pride ourselves on making sure everybody makes a living wage. You're able to make your rent and have fun at the same time. A lot of the students that come out with their associate's degree or some sort of maybe certificate in mechatronics, when they get into industry, and let's say they go into a maintenance technician role or an automation technician role. You're talking probably $60,000, $70,000 a year out of college. You weld and fabricate stainless steel. You can make a lot of money. Really good career-long uh, wages. In the, in the trades. We actually do a lot of training even even at our company. You're always going to need somebody to, to be able to code and, and have to tell the robot what to do in the language that the robot understands. That's your you know computer science engineers, that's your two-year degrees. If you like coding and you like getting into the bits and bytes of things, you will always have a job in this industry and it'll be a cool job because you will be making things like this move and do the jobs that they're intended to do. In our field, if you're skilled, if you're driven, you're committed, there will always be a job for you. You'll get all your benefits. You'll get 401k in your retirement. The other thing that you'll see is you have unlimited growth opportunities. The future is always shifting, faster than ever. You can meet it with fear or lean in with courage. No one has a perfect map of what's coming, but here's what we do know. The world needs people willing to build, fix, move, and create. Skilled careers aren't just jobs. They're lifelines for the economy, for communities, for you. And here's the truth most people don't say out loud. You haven't been left behind. Skilled careers are wide open, accessible, in demand, and evolving alongside the tech that's shaping tomorrow. There are multiple entry points, real growth, and real fulfillment waiting. So if you felt stuck, overlooked, or unsure of your place in the future, now's the time to move. Your future hasn't passed by you. It's waiting for you to meet it. The only question is, how will you respond? Right now in the world, we're in the same place that we were in the 19th century when a lot of work was replaced that people just don't do anymore. I think it's something you should definitely be excited about. What's going to happen with AI is gonna create a bunch of new opportunities for people to grow different and more interesting careers. I think it opens up even more opportunities for us to do less of that tedious work and really focus on the creative stuff. There's a career for everybody and AI will help you get to the next place. It will not replace the things that you wanna do. The reality is, is it still takes a human being to be able to produce physical goods. Skilled trades are important. Somebody's operating this thing. You should consider skilled trades. Thanks.